Ah! Hey everybody, welcome to The Recoup. I'm Cooper Daniels, and I'm a guy that knows a little about a lot. And today we're continuing with the crypto series, and we're talking about Digibyte. But more specifically, we're talking about Digibyte and Humble Pay. It's a relationship that goes way back, folks. But my question is, what is the relationship going to be moving forward? Magnum DGB is on the scene. I've got questions, I've got answers, and I've got a lot to talk about. So let's get into it. First off, I just want to say, this is a bullish video. This is a bullish video on Humble. This is a bullish video on Digibyte. I'm bullish on both of these, okay? But I am exploring one specific thing, and I do have some questions about how Digibyte is going to be a part of Humble's future. All right? I know some of you out there are probably strictly humble investors and you don't really care about the relationship with Digibyte. And I know some of you are Digibyte investors that really do care about their relationship with humble. And then I'm sure there are a ton of you that are humble and Digibyte holders and you have a complicated spectrum of feelings about this relationship. I don't know what you think. I'll tell you what I think and we're about to get into it. So if you're new to all of this and you're wondering what the hell is this guy even talking about? What is Humble? Well, Humble is basically seeking to be like this one-stop shop for the digital economy, right? Uh, a wallet coming soon. They already have an app. It's going to be, you know, mobile digital payments. It's going to be, you can buy tickets. They're, they're live with the whole ticketing service now. And the fees are very competitive with Humble tickets. They have an NFT marketplace. They have uh, financial services. They have a whole ETX line, which is an exchange traded index. It's basically bags of crypto that you can invest in. The branding is very cool. The merchandise is cool. It's got a lot of buzz and it's got a vibrant community. So big shout out to Humble and the community and how well they're doing, except for the stock price. But we'll get into that, I guess, or we won't. I don't know. But the stock price has been under some pressure, but look. This is a startup company and it's a growth company and there are going to be hiccups in the process and besides the entire stock market is under pressure anyways, especially growth. So look past that for now. Now one of the things about Humble that make it a little, you know, a little um, less amazing is the fact that they're reliant on third parties, right? You, none of this is native to Humble. So that's Humble, okay? What is Digibyte? Well, I'm sure you guys know, but Digibyte is a blockchain that's been around since 2014. It is the longest UTXO blockchain. It's a fork of Bitcoin. It does digital money really well, and then it also does digital identification very well. DigiID is a very secure way for you to log into websites, and it is a, um, a technology that should be leveraged by more companies. So what does Digibyte do well? It does DigiID and it does digital money very, very well. Now they also have DigiAsset X coming soon. They've been building out this whole smart contract DAP layer for a while. It's been in the process and it is, it's coming, it's coming. But if you're looking at Digibyte right now, it's good money, it's sound money, it's truly decentralized money, and it also is great for cybersecurity and protecting your digital identity. Okay, now look, I actually came upon Digibyte um, a while ago and it was from watching um, YouTube videos on the Digibyte Summit, okay? Now, Brian Foote, who is the CEO of Humble, at that time was the CEO of Block30 Labs, and he gave a presentation at the Digibyte Summit. And he talked about how he was going to build Block30 Labs on Digi Assets, and it was gonna be one of the first, and it was a huge marriage. He owned Digibyte, his team owned Digibyte, everybody was excited about Digibyte, and it was a big Digibyte love fest at the Digibyte Summit involving Brian Foote and Block30 Labs. Great, exciting, awesome. Brian Foote went on, they created those ETXs, they made Digibyte part of those ETXs. Unfortunately for Digibyte, um, they can only be part of the ETXs that are linked to Bittrex because Coinbase is very slow to putting Digibyte on their exchange. But that's neither here nor there. Digibyte is a part of the ETXs that are now part of Humble. Now, this is what sort of happened. And I'm going to try to get, you know, look, this is probably not a one episode thing, folks. But so this is basically what happened. Block 30 Labs was going to build on Digi Assets. All right. Now, that didn't really work out. Digi Assets has been in development for a while. Now, there could be a case to be made to being like, well, you know, Block30 Labs, which turned into Humble, which basically turned into Humble. I guess that could be 
nitpicked, but it sure seemed like Block30 Labs disappeared and then turned into Humble. But now we have this Blocks.io uh, DAO happening in Wyoming that was organized by Brian Foote, which it gets, it gets very, very murky here, folks. But it does appear that Blocks.io, created by Brian Foote, its stated mission is to onboard enterprises onto the blockchain, right? Blocks is a ERC-777, so it's built on the Ethereum blockchain, and it is saying that it is going to um, be a vehicle to onboard enterprises. Now, this seems very, very likely to be a vehicle to onboard Humble to the blockchain. Now, why they would do that is because, look, with regulations, it's important for there to be decentralization. You know, a DAO is a decentralized autonomous organization. So in its name, it's decentralized. So they create this DAO, they onboard Humble to the blockchain through the DAO, and then they kind of get um, regulators off their back and uh, they can become less reliant on third parties. Now, there is a case to be made from Digibyte being like, well, Digibyte is truly decentralized. You could use Digibyte, right? Why not invest some money into Digi Assets and build out Digi Assets? Like you said, you were going to do Brian. Why not, bud? And I think there is a genuine case to be made. But unfortunately, folks, look, number one, humble, Brian Foot. These guys are businessmen. And I think this story repeats itself for Digibyte all the time that using Digibyte isn't going to make him a lot of money. If you're a humble investor, Blocks.io, this DAO is a big deal. It's going to help humble and it's going to help them with peer to peer international money transfers and all of that stuff. It's going to be interesting. Now, I'm not an expert on this, but it does seem clear that Blocks was built in order to be a vehicle for Humble to get to the blockchain in a decentralized way. I believe Humble actually was initially a tipping app, but the branding was so cool, I think that they just kind of ditched Block30 Labs, or maybe they ditched Block30 Labs because they had this plan with this DAO, I don't know. But now Humble basically does all the things that Block30 Labs was gonna do, except for the fact they don't use Digi Assets, they use Ethereum for their NFT marketplace. They still have their ETXs that Digibyte are, are a part of, but that's it, right? We saw some beta of um, the new wallet that Humble's coming out with, and I saw no sign of being able to buy Digibyte on Humble. I mean, obviously this is just the beta version, but there's another link to Digibyte. There's a guy named Adam Wolf, who is the head of blockchain at Humble. Adam Wolf used to be part of the Digibyte awareness team, I believe. I hope I got that right, but I think he was part of the Digibyte awareness team. He created something called Digibyte Pay, and that turned into DigiCafe, I believe, and now it's something called DigiTide DigiCafe. With DigiCafe, you can actually use Digibyte, Litecoin, Ethereum, and Bitcoin to make purchases, and you can also now buy cryptocurrency on DigiCafe using Wire. Now, Wire doesn't support Digibyte, and it did appear when I was looking at these beta images of the Humble wallet that it's possible that Humble is also using wire. I don't know. I don't know that for a fact at all. But it would make sense because they need to rely on third parties. So there's no Digibyte as it stands right now. You can't buy Digibyte on Humble. So basically the only relationship left with Humble and Digibyte, as far as I can see right now, is through the ETXs. And who's to say that they don't just cut bait? Because what if they just, what if they get rid of their relationship with Bitrix and then it's just Coinbase, then they just knock Digibyte off, right? This is the way I see it. I see that Humble needed Digibyte in the past. Humble doesn't get to where it is without the Digibyte community. That's how I see it. But I don't believe Humble needs Digibyte moving forward, which may be a problem for some people. I don't know. Humble is its own thing. And obviously, it's going to want to be cryptocurrency agnostic. It's going to want to be able to use different cryptocurrencies. And I don't blame them for using Ethereum for their NFT marketplace. Digi Assets hasn't been ready. And like I said, it's it would have been cool 
if they had maybe committed some money to help build out digi assets and they could have kept their word on that but they're businessmen and they're trying to make money and they're trying to move this forward and they made a calculation that it was better to move to ethereum now they're building out this dow which they're they're very carefully making it clear that these are two separate things humble and blocks are two separate things because they need those to be two separate things okay you understand for regulations when they eventually use blocks as a onboarding mechanism for humble to the blockchain they're going to need those things to be separate it's a very bullish thing for humble but it's also a very ethereum thing and i don't i don't you know poo poo anybody using ethereum or erc20 or an erc777 it doesn't matter it doesn't matter this is what they're doing my issue comes with where does digibyte fit into all this I'm starting to think that Digibyte is about to get left in the dust with Humble. Now, do I know that for a fact? No, I don't. What are the best case scenarios and what's the worst case scenario for the Digibyte Humble relationship? I'll start with the worst case scenario. The worst case scenario is, is that Humble moves forward without Digibyte completely. You can buy cryptocurrencies on Humble using a service like Wire. They don't leverage their relationship with Wire at all to put pressure on Wire to um, include Digibyte. And so you can't even buy Digibyte on there. They don't include Digibyte, any sort of payment mechanism where you can use Digibyte. They, um, they develop their ETXs to only use something like Coinbase that doesn't support Digibyte. And then Digibyte's just gone. And they basically just use the Digibyte community to create momentum for them in the beginning and they ditch they ditch digibyte that's the worst case scenario what's the best case scenario and this is what i'm hoping for this is what i'm hoping for the best case scenario is this is that adam wolf digicafe they actually use digicafe on humble so humble kind of eats up digicafe and now you can buy things on humble using digicafe with Digibyte, Litecoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin. Digibyte's part of that. They start to sell cryptocurrency on Humble with a service that includes Digibyte. So you can actually buy Digibyte from Humble. They incorporate DigiID for their app, which is the easiest solution. This should be the very least that Humble does is uses DigiID for the app and would make it more secure for everybody to log in. And it would be a wonderful nod to the Digibyte technology and Digibyte community. And um, they make it so these ETXs are supported in a way where Digibyte can continue to be part of them. That's the best case scenario, I think, as I see it. What do you guys think? You think I'm worried about something that doesn't even exist? Because look, as I see it right now, the direction they are going, I fear that Digibyte is going to be completely left in the dust. And I don't think it's appropriate. I don't think that's cool. That's what I think. But like I said, I'm bullish on both. And like I said, I believe that Humble can be successful without Digibyte. And I know that Digibyte can be successful without Humble. I know both of these things can exist. So if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. I mean, I move on. You know what I mean? Like, whatever. I'm not going to sit here and cry about it. But just the quickest of recaps... I got introduced to Digibyte and Humble through the um, Block 30 Labs presentation at the Digibyte Summit. And there was promises of Block 30 Labs being built on Digi Assets. They pivoted from that. They are now using Ethereum. And it seems like potentially Humble is moving forward without Digibyte and kind of leaving them behind. Now, my hope is, is that DigiCafe and its uh, payment service that uses Digibyte will be integrated into Humble somehow. So you'll be able to use Digibyte on Humble. And then also that Humble will leverage whatever service they're gonna eventually use, which it appears that it might be Wire because obviously Adam Wolf is the head of blockchain at Humble and his project, Digitide or DigiCafe or whatever you call it now, is using Wire to make purchases over there. It seems to make sense that there would be some bleed over here. And Wire doesn't support Digibyte. So Wire, why don't you support Digibyte? And Humble, why don't you talk to Wire about supporting Digibyte? Why don't you help lift up the Digibyte community just like the Digibyte community helped lift up DigiCafe and Humble Pay, right?
That's what I think. All right, everybody. Hey, if you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe. And if you have any comments, if you have any concerns, if you think I've been inaccurate in any way, put it in the comments and let's talk about it. I'm willing to adjust, folks, and I'll probably do another video on this very topic coming soon. All right, everybody. Hey, thank you for watching and do your homework.